Every time I post a furniture project, especially these joints of the week you see behind here, inevitably 10% of the comments are people freaking out about wood movement like it's gonna go off like a hand grenade and kill everybody within its blast radius. Well, I'm here to tell you, I have never, not a single thing I've ever built have had a problem with wood movement except for one jewelry box I built at the very beginning of my career where I used a bunch of scrap wood with different grain orientations and it twisted a little bit. Other than that, I've never had a problem because I know what wood movement's gonna do. I know that how to account for it and I know that it's really not as big a deal as people make. I think when people start their woodworking journey, the people they're learning from say, oh, we need to account for wood movement and there's all this discussion about it, but I don't even think they, they know what it means. I know that it gets the people going. No one knows what it means, but it's provocative. No, it's not. It's it gets gross. the people going. It's but I'm here to tell you, it's measurable. It's not as bad as you think and that you can calculate it without specialty tools. I'm gonna to show you, if you can follow my logic for just the next couple of minutes, I'm gonna to prove to you beyond a reasonable doubt that wood movement is a simple thing. It's different in different regions and different types of wood, but it, the data exists. In fact, <laughs> the uh, Forest Service, the Forest Products Laboratory did a massive, many decades study that they published that is over 500 pages and I read the whole thing, and I brought the best of the best of the data for you. I didn't actually print this. This is just a 500 page ream of paper. I'm not that stupid. But let's get into it, and I'm gonna show you why wood movement is not that scary. Wood is hydroscopic. That means it has a tendency to absorb moisture from the air. Once it's dry, in this video, we are talking about lumber that is ready to work with, that's important. Whether lumber is ready to work with, that is a whole other subject. One cool fact though is lumber is 72% water, AKA sap, and 28% moisture that is absorbed into the wood. And typically you wanna get it down to six to 8% kiln dried or like eight to 12% if it's air dried. So it is hydroscopic. It's going to absorb moisture relative to humidity. You've all seen the straw example. I'm sure you did this as a kid. California, don't arrest me. I'm not telling you where I got this straw. But wood is going to expand and contract across the grain. So across this way, across my shoulders, just like this. So this is the grain fibers, like the length of this table, and it's gonna expand when it gets moisture across the width. So as humidity goes up, your table is gonna expand this way. As it goes away, it's gonna contract. So because it expands and contrasts across the width, that's why we use butterfly keys and slabs. Checking is very normal. Uh, that's what you call a crack, checking. Checking is very normal in live edge furniture, and it's a great way to protect against that kind of cracking. And the reason that doesn't happen when you use a bunch of boards laminated together in a panel glue up is because the change is much smaller per board. It's not gonna crack in that board. Those are gonna be cumulative and add up to the whole table expanding contracting, which we're gonna talk about how much in a minute. But let's take a look at this farmhouse table. You can see we modeled this farmhouse table in CAD to show you that it's gonna expand and contract across the width. But in a farmhouse table like this, you would use a breadboard end. In this example, you're gonna put glue in the regular circle center hole uh, with a dowel, but then on the two edges, the dowels are not gonna be glued in because you want them to be able to move back and forth as the table expands and contracts. If you take a look at this houndstooth dovetail, this is one of the ones that caused the most comments, I think, of people saying it was gonna explode. It's gonna expand and contract across the width. It's also gonna expand and contract across the width here. So they're gonna move together. What you would be worried about, and if this were like a drawer or something, you'd be worried about the panel that goes across. And we would normally limit that with plywood, which a wood that is stable and not gonna move. These figure eight washers are another great one. You would just drill a recessed Forstner hole into your leg here and then screw this into your tabletop. And that allows it to rotate as the table expands and contracts, not gonna be nearly that much, but it allows the table to be free form from the legs. In addition, that table we were at a little while ago, which I have a great video on, it'll be linked here in the upper right-hand corner. We drilled oblong holes in the legs. In fact, I talk about it at that clip, why we did it the way we did. The holes are much wider than the screws. You can see the screw just drops right in, but there's a washer, so it holds the leg to the table, but it allows that screw to move back and forth with the table. 
All right, so we got to get through a couple things before we get to the really exciting calculations. I know math can be fun. But when does wood move? Uh, it's going to expand and contract over the seasons. But when you were, if you were to Google, like, what is the indoor humidity versus outdoor, you're going to see some massively different numbers. And that would scare you if you didn't know that those were two different measuring systems. When you look at relative humidity, ideal relative humidity indoors, that's 40 to 60%. And all that is measuring is the moisture content that a certain temperature can hold. The more that goes up, the more moisture the air can hold, but it doesn't mean it's actually gonna hold it. What you wanna look at is absolute humidity, which is the moisture in the air, and the temperature. And if those go up and down at the same time, which is typical on a day, the wood is not going to move. Whereas across seasons, the absolute humidity may go down and the temperature may go up or vice versa. That's why in the winter, there's much less, at least in the Northern hemisphere, in the winter months, there's going to be much less moisture in the air than there is going to be in the summer months in most places. Jonathan, what does this all mean? Can you get to your point? Okay, so according to that wood handbook, I put the paper back so I didn't spill it all over my shop. Water is 72% out of a tree that is still alive, which we call sap, and 28% of that moisture is absorbed into the fibers of the wood. So when you cut it down, the sap's gonna leak out very quickly. That's gonna leave 28% left that you need to get it down to be able to work with it. Now with kiln dried, that's typically six to 8%. With air dried, about nine to 12% before it's ready to use. And that's why people say you wanna acclimate wood to your shop when you bring it in, because it's gonna be different than where it was. Maybe your lumber yard is air controlled or it's outdoors and your shop is air controlled. So you wanna bring it in and let it adjust to your shop. Kiln dried, you wanna let it sit for a couple weeks air dried, you know, a couple days, and then you're ready to work with it. So here is where I get to my point about, you know, is wood movement a myth? No, but it is a misconception. And I'm going to show you how to solve that misconception with a formula. Okay, so let's get in the formula. We need to talk about there's two different variations of the formula based on the type of wood you're using. Now, there is very typical uh, rift or quarter sawn. As you can see in that picture, those are the boards you see with the lines going down the side. It looks like this one here. They are vertical to the orientation of the board sitting on your bench. And then there's flat or plain sawn where the lines are horizontal to the board sitting on your bench. Now this makes a big difference in the way that they move. Rift or quarter sawn is much more stable across its width. Flat or plain sawn is gonna move a little bit more. And there's a number for that formula from the data. Now the next part of the formula we have to explain is tangential versus radial. Now I know in your head you're saying this is, I'm never gonna remember that. That's okay. I've put together the highlights of that handbook. I've got it all in a PDF linked down below over on my website. I'll also link all the data I use down there as well so you can go check it out yourself if you'd like to. Um, I've also made the formula very simple which you'll get with that package along with these pictures. So you can just put those in your shop, reference it, and you'll be able to solve this stuff in seconds. Now, tangential versus radial. Flats on is gonna move tangentially. They're both gonna move across the width, but flats on is what we call the tangential coefficient, tangent, that's tough to say. And then rift or quarter sawn is gonna move radial across its rift. And that refers to the place it is in the log. If you look at this picture, because they come in different places, they move differently. Just the ratio of movement is different from the data. So you need to use a different number in your formula. If you look at these boards here, I use softwood because the grain is way bigger and easier to see. This is gonna be rift or quarter sawn. This is gonna be flat or plain sawn. You can see the rings go horizontal, whereas rift quarter sawn, much more desirable and stable, uh, is gonna go vertically. So let's talk about the formula to find how much your wood is gonna move over time, aka the change in dimension. It's a very easy formula. Don't let the coefficient stress you out yet because we're gonna show you that chart. It'll be included in the PDF as well. So you don't need to calculate that number. All you need to know is the width of your board and change in humidity, which I'm also gonna tell you how to find without any special tools here in a second. So the formula is width of your board times the coefficient where tangential is the flat or plain sawn, radial is the uh, rift or quarter sawn. So width times the coefficient times the change in moisture. So if it's 12% one month and the wood goes down to 11%, that is a one there. And you just multiply those three numbers together, that is gonna give you your change in dimension. Now, when you look at this, the hardwoods are on the top, you see softwoods are on the bottom of the chart, and then it has the species of wood in the left side of the two columns. Now, there is a CR at the top, that means the radial coefficient and the tangential coefficient. And this is something those eggheads over at the Forest Service have put together by just doing it and checking species after species. When you read the notes on how this experiment was conducted, it was wild. But 
they broke it down for you and you can see the rift sawn or quarter sawn number coefficient is smaller than the tangential, the flat or plain sawn coefficient. And that's that number. So you just do the width of your board. Let's say it's one inch times the coefficient. You just find your species or if it's for some reason not on this very comprehensive list, look at the Jenka scale and find a wood that is a roughly the same Jenka hardness and you multiply that times the change in humidity. Okay, so let's look at an example. Let's say we have a farmhouse table like we showed in that CAD model. Uh, it's 40 inches across. I built it in June in Santa Barbara uh, out of rift or quarter sawn. So that's the straight grain. You see a bunch of grain with the vertical end grain. I built it in June, which has 14% equilibrium moisture content. That means I didn't measure it, but I went to this handbook, which again, we'll have this chart in a minute. And I checked out what dried lumber's equilibrium moisture content is in June in Santa Barbara. This data is over 30 years of measuring humidity. And I wanna know how much it's gonna change until December, which is at 13% humidity. And I'm gonna put these numbers up on the screen here. So I'm gonna to go to my chart where it says walnut. I'm, I know that I have rift or quarter saw material, so I'm gonna use the radial coefficient, which is 0 0.00190. And now this works for millimeters or imperial. You don't need to change the number. It's just a coefficient, so it's not in metric or imperial. So I'm gonna take the width of my table at 40 inches, multiply it times 0 0.0019, and then I'm gonna multiply it times the change in humidity, which is 1.7%. So my shrinkage over about three and a half feet, a little bit shy, two inches shy, or 106 centimeters, is gonna be 0.129 inches. That's an eighth of an inch or 3.2 millimeters. And so let's look at that CAD example again, so you can see how much it's moving. Now I'm simulating a quarter inch of movement here, so double the movement. We have plenty of room there because that's across both sides. So when you divide that eighth in half, you gotta have a 16th on either side of that breadboard. Everybody knows how big a 16th is. All right, so there's two ways to measure moisture content. One is with a specialty tool. I'm gonna show you the non-specialty tool here in a second. 12%, uh, I've measured this walnut here. These are great, it's about 50 bucks. The one thing that's important to do is there's a little chart that tells you which density to set your wood at. It shows you the different types of woods. The other way is this equilibrium moisture chart. I'm gonna put this on the screen here. They took 30 years of humidity data and took the average equilibrium for moisture over that time period. And if you look at Santa Barbara, uh, it's the lowest month of the year. It's November when we're recording this, that says 12.1%. Now look at my moisture meter here, 12%. So this will be included in that PDF I have for you over on the website, but you can avoid buying a $50 moisture meter. I really suggest you avoid the ones with pins. They're not nearly as accurate. And of course they damage your wood to be able to measure it. So these are wonderful, but it's the equilibrium moisture content. They have cities from all over the world, different areas. They have all 50 states and then bunch of popular cities. And if you don't see your city on there, just find one that's close to your area that's gonna help you get that proper moisture content. And the way you read it is you look at whatever month you're building the project in, Let's, I remember my example was June at 14.7%, and six months later, I wanted to know what my uh, change in my shrinkage was gonna be to December, which was 13%, so that gave me that 1.7% number from the example. To me, that is just incredible, that you could look at a chart and you don't have to guess at the moisture content. You know your wood is ready to use because you bought it from a lumber yard, it sat in your shop for a couple weeks, and you can just think about it. You can say, okay, what month am I in? All right, I know that I have the most moisture right now that my city ever has, so I need to plan for the worst case scenario, so I'm gonna take that lowest number, and I'm gonna plan my build accordingly. Here's the best part. If you look at that chart, that is for outdoors. So my shop is not insulated. We have huge metal roll-up doors and open windows. So we're essentially outside in here as far as moisture content goes. When you get into the inside, the comfort of your home, and it's always climate controlled, you have great insulation, it's not gonna change as much. So that is worst case scenario if you're using this chart in that formula. And if you're planning for the worst case scenario, you're never gonna have a problem. And once you start to understand it and you start to realize that over 40 inches, in my example, that farmhouse table, we have an eighth of an inch. So when you look at those joints of the week behind me that are two inches, that eighth of an inch over 40 inches, that comes to three thou over an inch. So over two inches, let me show you what that looks like. Now that you've seen that, Turd Burglar 6969 from Reddit. Guys, 
Go over to my website, pick up that. I'll put it all together in a simple to read PDF for you. Basically, it's just the highlights of all the wonderful work of the Forest Service. You guys are awesome. That data is incredible. It goes into depth about all kinds of things like different building materials, plywood, OSB. It's nuts. If you wanna peruse through it, if you, if you like to nerd out on stuff, highly recommend. Guys, if you wanna support the channel, head over to the kmtools.com store. We've got about 40 tools over there that I think you're gonna love. Thanks for watching guys, stay safe in the shop.